I leave my house. What I want to talk about today is how nervous I feel actually leaving my own house. I literally feel nervous leaving my own house because it's been a year since I've been consistently going outside. But now I'm busy all week. I'm consistently going outside. I've got this clan, I've got this to do, I've got that to do. It's very, very weird to me. It's incredibly weird to me. I was often worrying, like I'm, like I'm on the verge of frenzy. <laughs> so Patrick Bet, uh, Patrick Bet, Patrick Bateman type vibe. Um, I, my social skills, I never knew that they could decrease like it, it has now, but fucking hell, it actually has decreased. Jesus Christ, it is genuinely decreased. I, I've seen myself go from that extroverted funny funny character which i still am at my core essence and when I, I get outside and i'm in the social flow i get into it easily i'm quite extroverted however get the initial like wall of getting out of the house i feel intensely nervous even though it's usually never anything worth getting nervous for it's very weird this is what happens when you don't go outside for a while <laughs> No, I think that even when I was going outside consistently for Harringay, I still felt this way. On my, my second college, I still felt this way. But then, after a while, I just became like a shut-in. I just became a shut-in and I just stopped going outside for a long time. And uh, I just saw myself become a hikikomori. I just want another video topic that I want to touch on, but I'll touch on this video because it's might as well. I need to leave at 11. Okay, I got, I got, I got like half an hour to record videos. Sick. Uh, I've just, my biggest fear out of all of this is that I'm literally, obviously I'm afraid of going outside the house, which is pretty fucking mental because I'm never, ever, I never ever struggle in social situations. I literally do not give a fuck. Very interesting. I still manage to give a fuck though. Just the initial war to go outside and I'm about to go meditate so I can try to calm myself. Drink some water as well. But yeah, it's so weird. I feel like a complete introvert. Like back in the day, back in the day type of shit. Back in the day I was an introvert. And I struggled with this. And then now, 10 years later, I, after all of my extroversion, back to introversion. The fuck? Oh yeah, my nose blocks. It's morning man, it's so annoying. My biggest fear from all of this is becoming a hikikomori, or as the Japanese call it, a shut-in. A shut-in, or the Japanese call it a hikikomori. Like a person who usually just end up locking themselves in their room, they try to make some money online somehow, they make like, I don't know, 500,000 a month off online, and then that gives them a valid excuse to never go outside and completely envelop their lives into the virtual world and just waste it there. It happens to men and women alike, but usually men. It's quite worrying. For such an advanced society. That's such a, pr not even a primordial way. That's such a shitty hermit way to live. Living like a hermit for a year was pretty shitty in my opinion. I found myself often sticking into video games. Into mindless, weak distractions. That didn't really pay me back in any sort of way. And I often had this overbearing thought of, what the hell am I doing in my life? I'm wasting my time, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. I should be doing X, I should be doing N and Y, not A and B. The gaming, the mindless YouTube scrolls. I should be recording content, I'm recording videos on my channel, like I am now. Recording, uh, thing, editing videos that are, are, are pre-existing. I should be doing that type of thing. I'm busy, I should be applying for jobs, what the fuck am I doing? And these thoughts will just pervade my mind and it will be intensely uncomfortable facing these thoughts. So I would delve in deeper into the distractions, which I, which right now it's, it's pretty uncomfortable, but I, I know if I get, when I get there, I won't even feel it that much, I wouldn't care. It won't even be that uncomfortable and, you, and I'll just get used to it. Oh my, I've got my clock here. 10.31. Well, I wanted to talk about this video and advice for you as well, the viewer, and for myself in the future. But I'm saying it to myself, what I would tell myself. It's to face your problems as soon as they arise. Do not postpone your problems to the last minute. Because then you reach a certain point in which your problems feel unbearable to face. 
They feel unsolvable. They feel overbearing. It feels annoying. It's quite stressful. And I know how that feels like. I'm feeling it right now. Oh, so what? I got like some fucking traineeship apprenticeship type shit. I'm, I'm going here for an hour only. I want to get food as well after. It's going to be fun. It, like, not even really fun. It's going to be okay. I do want that McDonald's breakfast. I haven't had it in over... I think over four years I haven't had McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> that's good. That's good parenting for my mom. Tell me moms. <sighs> the fact that I feel this way is indicative of... I don't know, a bit of a failed society in my opinion. I felt this way in school, like going through the school system, I felt incredibly nervous, incredibly so. I think, in my first college, not so much, I was a, quite the social butterfly. However, in my second college, I really, really felt this, because I, I, I saw myself in the mirror and I felt as if I was hideous every single day. And I don't, I'm not particularly handsome now, and if I keep losing fat, I will be more handsome, I know that for sure. But how I felt back then was like... Fuck, you know, I, I looked in the mirror every single day and I was severely, severely unhappy with myself. That's how I lived. I was severely happy, unhappy myself, looking back at myself. How fucked is that? How fucked is that? You just look in the mirror and you're so... Happy with yourself, but you don't even know what to think. I want to save like 10 20 minutes for the meditation session. But I'm not gonna leave soon. It's a fuck situation, man. I could read as many books as I want Dale Carnegie, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, 48 Laws of Power, 48 Laws of Seduction. Robert Green, those two are Robert Green. They aren't gonna help me in this. Honestly, real help. Like, like MG Democrat said, first hand experience is more value, valuable than any other book you read. Obviously, it will help, but still, I'll give it a read. Still, I'm not gonna let us stop me reading these books. It's quite, it's quite honestly stressful. Catch you guys in the next video. Sue